Bad news, we're not going to be able to get any more money to carry on. I, want to be able. I really need to fight back. Otto has become a role model. The two ideas came together, essentially. We were always going to make a documentary, and Otto was always going to make a short, and, uh, yeah, we, we were always sort of running those in tandem, uh, essentially, yeah. But the, the doc came before it being the puppet asylum. Like, at the beginning, it could have been anything. It could have been a rom-com or, a, like, I mean, Otto went through all of them, but he's a true horror fan. As soon as he started describing scenes to us, because that's the way how Otto sort of works, isn't it? He'll say, mm -hmm. I'm in a room, it's got, you know, there's sort of medical instruments, there's, he'll, he'll, he'll talk you through the scene. It was clear that it was a, a horror scene he was walking us into. Just like horror. I'm a fan of it. I love making films because I like making it and starring in it. I knew Bruce and Pete, and I knew Otto, um, and I knew that they had had this ambition to, to kind of find something else to do, a doc with him, to kind of delve a bit further. So I was really excited when they came to me with the idea that they that they wanted to help Otto to make a film, because I thought, right, now I can, now this is my world and I can help. And my background is in development, and so I work a lot with writers and directors as they develop and their story and naturally you you know you give notes and you spend time kind of helping them to nurture the story that they want to tell and finding the way through that with Bruce and Pete and with Otto at the same time as having set out to let him take the reins and not question his ideas and not put our neurotypical structures onto his ideas and so we wanted to you know we set out to say we won't dismiss anything however bonkers it sounds to us on the set it was sort of you know what might sound like quite simple things but but made a big difference in terms of just making it feel like an accessible and welcoming environment everyone had name badges with their jobs on there was a description of what all the jobs were uh, in uh, the call sheets. There were pictures, I suppose, on the call sheet, so people had a visual idea of where they were gonna go and where they needed to be at different points in the day. Otto sent a, a letter round to everybody who was involved in the shoot just to kind of give them the context and background for the project and, uh, uh, and, and to sort of explain, you know, some of the ways in which he would like to be uh, worked with on set and uh, and also so, so some other things to keep in mind with uh, for working with with anybody on set really so um yeah there were all sorts of different things uh, that we that we put in place really to to try and make it an accessible place my favorite scene has to be when uh, when i smash out the uh, the cabinet it's sugar glass window i have to smash it otto sort of being locked inside the glass cabinet and smashing out and saying I'm the fucking master was ju just a, a sort of brilliant moment because he was so off with he really wanted to have a sugar glass scene right from the beginning and he mm. really got to smash something because um, that's just good fun, uh, let's face it. So I think that, but also it felt like it was just a really big cathartic moment for Otto because the whole sort of shoot had been building to this moment and all of writing the film and everything had been built into this moment. And then there, he was just so sort of excited about smashing out and literally taking control. So I think it meant it's a big scene in the film and a big scene in the documentary, but also it was a, was a big thing in Otto's life. And it was, it was just the tremendous fun. The shoot overall was, was one, one of the most memorable sort of things I've done in my career. The uh, tone that Otto set on the on the on the film set was was you know really just came from he's he's actually a, you know he's a very very nice person who just wants people to be included and and to sort of buy into what he was doing and I just think that everybody in every sort of role on the set really bought into it particularly the heads of department who just wanted to get inside Otto's head and and do their best work sort of according to how you know Otto saw his film coming together making that the drama elements of Otto's short on the budget that we had was an enormous challenge. I had a lot of help for an incredible production team, but unlike most first-time directors who set out to make their first short, also didn't deliberately write a very small contained short with two people in one room. It had scale, he set it in Victorian London, it had VFX and special effects and gore and multiple locations, and we didn't want to curb any of that, so 
yes, I guess that the biggest challenge was kind of letting him have the scale and ambition that he wanted. One of the things for, for both of us is that we're not normally in the films that we make. <laughs> Uh, and so I suppose that felt like a bit of a challenge, particularly at the beginning of the edit. It took a while. That's a weird thing, isn't it? Making sure you nail your own character arc. <laughs> <laughs> we always absolutely believed Otto would be able to make it, um, and, he, and he's, he's clearly a very capable filmmaker. But I think a lot of people weren't in the same frame of mind about it as they might have been now, in terms of genuinely hearing from neurodiverse voices. That was probably the, the biggest initial challenge. And there were years, weren't there, where it yeah. felt like it, might, it just might not happen. They can't take away my destiny. I just think it's a sort of uh, um, a, a, an argument for why there should be greater diversity behind the camera, essentially, and that you know if we don't have that, then you end up with uh, programs that maybe look and feel the same and don't have the sort of range of perspectives, which, you know, I just think everyone wins. I like to change it with all the Down syndrome people should be in films and whatever. It has to be equal. How do they be treated? I'm just really excited about people seeing what Otto has achieved and I think it's a fantastic short regardless of whether the director is neurodiverse, I, you know, I'm just incredibly proud of it as a piece of work. I'm also really proud of the kind of microcosm of creative working friends that is Bruce, Pete and Otto and um, that partnership. And I think that that, I hope, is inspiring in terms of, you know, looking for other creative partnerships and integrating a little bit more. They need to watch the film because I'm in it and everyone else is in it.